Hello everyone, welcome back to Film Geek 520. My name is Helen and today we are going to talk about probably the most divisive film I've discussed on this channel. I am of course referring to Walt Disney Animation Studios monster 2013 hit Frozen, written by Jennifer Lee who also co-directed the film alongside Chris Buck. Frozen was released on November 22nd of that year on a budget of $150 million and went on to gross $1.27 billion. That is billion with a B. That makes Frozen the highest grossing film directed by a woman. The film was also a critical hit and it currently stands at 90% on Rotten Tomatoes and it earned two Academy Awards for Best Animated Feature and Best Original Song for Let It Go. It has since become a cultural phenomenon, spawning theme park attractions, theatrical shorts, and a full-fledged Broadway musical, which is coming to the West End next year. And the reason that we are talking about Frozen today is that at the end of November, six years to the day after it was first released, we are getting a sequel aptly titled Frozen 2. So what is this massively popular film even about? The film follows two sisters, Princess Anna of Arendelle, played by Kristen Bell, and Queen Elsa, played by Adina Menzel. They were close as children, but they have grown apart in the years since due to Elsa's inability to control her magical powers to conjure snow and ice. When Elsa becomes queen following their parents' deaths, she rejects Anna's request to marry Prince Hans, played by Santino Fontana, and she accidentally reveals her powers, fleeing the kingdom and leaving it in an eternal winter. With the help of ice maker Kristoff, played by Jonathan Groff, and talking snowman Olaf, played by Josh Gad, Anna sets out to end the eternal winter and to reconnect with her sister. There was a lot of buzz surrounding this film upon its release. Walt Disney Animation Studios, the one that dates all the way back to Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, had found themselves in kind of a critical and commercial slump in the 2000s as a historically hand-drawn animation studio in a market that was perpetuated with a lot of CGI animated films. This slump began to lift a little bit with the return to fairy tales with films like The Princess and the Frog and Tangled, but they still sat in the shadow of their corporate sibling Pixar. By the time Frozen came out, Pixar had lost its critical luster a bit, and 2013 had yet to see a bona fide animated critical and commercial success. Combined with catchy songs, an aggressive marketing campaign, and a huge nostalgia for the Disney mega musicals of the 90s, this film caught on like wildfire. I mean, Everybody in my university dorm saw it, and my grandma took me to see it because I didn't have a car at the time, and they even screened it on campus twice the weekend of the Oscars that year. It was something that united virtually everyone in one way or another. Now, Frozen is notable as the first WDES film to be directed by a woman, although it is important to point out that as of this recording, they have yet to give a woman sole directing credit on one of their features. Come on, guys. I have a complicated relationship with the Disney company, as I hinted at in my Parent Trap review last time. But I will try to keep my discussion today as closely related to the film itself as possible. Despite the prominence that Frozen has had in pop culture over the last six years, I have personally found the film to be a bit average, especially when comparing it to a lot of animated films that have come out since its release, and even some films that came out immediately prior to it. First, the story itself feels a bit too simple and in some cases incomplete, and this is due in part to the very, very lengthy production process for this film. You might not realize this on an initial watch, but the story is actually based off of a Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale entitled The Snow Queen, and Disney had been trying to adapt it for literally decades. The finished film bears hardly any resemblance to the original story apart from the presence of a female character who can conjure snow and ice who might possibly be a villain. Calling it a direct adaptation is a bit generous. The version of the film that we got is the result of a massive production change a bit under two years prior to its release. And for a computer animated film of this size, that is a nightmare scenario. This type of mid-production shift can tilt a film either way. It can become something truly great and phenomenal, like How to Train Your Dragon, 
or it can become something very disjointed, kind of like Brave. And don't worry, we'll get to that film at some point in the future on this channel. Frozen seems to have salvaged the best elements of its creative team to make for a relatively enjoyable watch, but upon my recent rewatch of it for this review, I couldn't help but feel that it was being held back from living up to its full potential as a film. Elsa's powers are very present throughout the film, but they are largely unexplored outside of the controlling factors of fear and love. In fact, the movie ends very quickly on a power of love message that magically causes all of the snow to melt. Now, I like the fact that the act of true love that will cure Anna of her ailment is actually nothing related to having a male love interest, but at the same time, the ending feels quite a bit rushed and unearned. This could be down to timing as well. I think the film maybe could have benefited with about 15 minutes more runtime. Speaking of unearned, uh, the bait-and-switch reveal of Hans as the actual villain is some of the biggest cinematic whiplash I've experienced in the last decade, La La Land included. It's all fine and dandy to reveal that the love interest isn't all they've cracked up to be, but you cannot have a plot twist like that without doing anything to set it up at all. It's Game of Thrones level unearned. Too much? This actually brings me to another aspect of the film that has been discussed to no end, and that is its frequent upending of Disney tropes. Now I have to praise the filmmakers for questioning Anna for wanting to marry a man that she met that day, and Elsa is also allowed to rule the kingdom in her own right without the need for a consort. And the film revolves around the central relationship between the two sisters, and whether we want to admit it or not, that's actually something that is very rare in films in general, let alone animated films. Unfortunately for Frozen, for as many trends that it tries to upend, there are just as many that it adheres to that bring down the quality of the film quite a bit for me. Firstly, <laughs> there is the fact that this film is a musical. It is the classic Disney formula, for lack of a better term, and thanks to the film's very late production story shift, the songwriters Robert Lopez and Kristen Anderson Lopez had a heavy hand in rewriting the script along with Jennifer Lee. Now, as someone who has been in various musicals and follows musical theater quite a bit, for me, for a musical to work, each and every song needs to be essential for moving the characters and the story forward. In the case of Frozen, honestly, the only song that I can think of that actually accomplishes this is let it go. I know, I'm shocked too, I'm saying something positive about it. Elsa is completely alone during this sequence, and the song works well as an effective journey for her thought process from running from her powers to embracing them. And yes, the song is incredibly overplayed, and it is essentially Defying Gravity 2.0. Casting Adina Menzel in this role didn't really help with that comparison. But the fact is, is that it resonates with so many people, especially people in the LGBTQ community, who can relate in some way to Elsa's struggle to embrace who she is. As for the rest of the songs, they are fine, but they range from mildly forgettable to completely unnecessary and sidestepping the main plot. Also, side note, if you have two-time Tony nominee Jonathan Groff in your cast, you give him more than a 30-second snippet of a song. The worst offender here is undoubtedly In Summer, Olaf's solo song. In fact, Olaf's entire existence in this movie just infuriates me to no end because there is absolutely no reason for him to be there other than to have a wisecracking, marketable sidekick. Let me explain. Olaf is one of a very long line of talking creature sidekicks in various Disney animated movies. Here's the thing, though. It has been proven multiple times in various fantasy-themed animated films that you can have effective animal sidekicks that don't talk. I'm not just talking about How to Train Your Dragon, guys, although that is probably the best example over the past decade. Disney has proven this in their own animated films. Take Tangled, for example. Here, you have a horse 
and a chameleon, neither of whom talk but are effective and comical side characters that you enjoy watching throughout the movie. Heck, there's even an effective non-speaking side character in Frozen in the form of Sven. And he's so much more essential to the plot than Olaf is. Olaf's job is to be cute, to provide the same brand of humor that ruins every single dramatic scene that he's in, and to sell a bunch of toy plushies. I'm sorry for bringing this up, but if Disney's excuse is that they just can't do fairy tales without it being a musical or having talking animal characters, they've proven themselves wrong on that front in their own films. Hmm. All right, I think I've ranted enough. Uh, so let's talk about some more things I actually enjoyed about this film. I promise there are some. I will say that the animation itself is absolutely gorgeous, especially during the Let It Go sequence. Snow and ice are not easy elements to animate, and the fact that they were able to keep up this level of excellence in animating them for the entire film is a massive feat, um, and so I really applaud the animation crew for that. The voice actors, Josh Gad aside, do an incredible job with fleshing out their characters and making them believable and fun and entertaining to watch. Kristen Bell and Adina Menzel in particular play so wonderfully off each other, and this is so important because their relationship is so central to the film, and if this didn't work, then the entire movie would fall apart. And luckily, it is the best and most believable aspect about this film, and no matter what else I don't like about Frozen, I'm always rooting for these sisters to reunite in the end. Anna and Elsa truly want the best for each other and to be the family that each other needs, and this is absolutely the saving grace of this film. So, in conclusion, I guess, uh, while there are some great feminist moments and characters in Frozen, for me, it is a pretty disappointing film that didn't take full advantage of the opportunity to do something truly different. In the immortal words of Eleanor Shellstrop, ya basic. <laughs> so, am I looking forward to the sequel? Intrigued is the word I would use to describe my feelings about Frozen 2 at the moment. The trailers have definitely downplayed Olaf's role throughout the marketing campaign, hopefully an indicator of his role with the movie, and they've also downplayed the musical numbers a little bit as well, save for their quote-unquote follow-up to let it go into the unknown. It certainly seems like more of an adventure film, and this has me cautiously excited. I say cautious because the film is still a musical, and while I would prefer for it not to be, I am holding out hope that the songs overall feel a bit more integral to the plot than the first one. From the sound of it, Frozen 2 has had a much smoother production process than its predecessor, and the crew and the story team seem to have been given some free reign to explore some deeper themes. Although, sorry to say, I doubt that Elsa will end up with a girlfriend in this one. This is Disney, after all. My hope for the sequel is, as we say on the internet, that Frozen walked so Frozen 2 could run. Phew, that was a lot. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening to my thoughts around Frozen. I know it is a bit of a contentious topic, so I would love to know your thoughts about Frozen in the comments down below. In two weeks' time, I will be staying on the animation train and fully embracing the holiday season and talking about Arthur Christmas. So excited to talk about it. It's one of my favorite Christmas movies. In the meantime, make sure to check me out on my second channel, on my blog, and of course on my social media stuff. That's Helen Marie95 on Twitter and Helen Marie underscore 95 on Instagram. Thank you guys very much for watching. Remember to keep living awesome lives, and I will see you all in two weeks. Bye.